Y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to introduce you to a tent I'll be testing out in the near future, and that's the Lanshan 2 Pro. I decided to test out the Lanshan 2 Pro because this is probably the most requested piece of gear that I've ever gotten on the channel. And since I haven't tested out a ton of budget gear, I'm still trying to get more of that under my belt. The Lanshan 2 Pro comes as a single walled three season tent. You can select for the four season version, but of course it's going to weigh and cost a little bit more than the one I'm talking about today. Included in my order for this tent was, of course, the tent body, a compression stuff sack, eight tent stakes with a little sack that those come in, a couple of floor repair kits, and then a syringe, I assume that's for helping seam seal, or possibly for repair with the patches, not really sure, but a syringe. The Lanshan 2 Pro does not come with designated tent poles, so you will have to set this up using trekking poles that you already have, or you'll have to purchase some for it. This is a two-person tent. When I'm selecting a backpacking tent to go out on trail, I prefer to have plus one of the actual number of people that will be sharing the sleeping space. So going solo, I like a two-person tent. If I have company that's gonna share my space, a three-person tent. The floor length of this tent is 90.6 inches, which is about 7.55 feet. And that's pretty comparable to my Z-Pax duplex. The width of the bathtub floor is 47.2 inches, which is about 3.93 feet. And that is a couple inches wider than my Z-Pax duplex, but I'm still thinking that, sure, this is a two-person tent, as in it will fit two average size bodies. But if you're gonna want enough space for gear, then this might not be your tent. What I do like about this tent for being a two-person tent is that it has a vestibule and door opening on either side of the tent so you don't have to crawl over your partner to get up and go pee in the middle of the night. The total footprint of this tent when set up and stretched out is 12.14 feet long by 8.86 feet wide. The tent body slash fly is made of 20 denier sill nylon. That just means nylon fabric that has been impregnated by silicone. Basically, it's silicone and nylon had a baby. The inner is made of 20 denier nylon mesh and the bathtub floor is made of PU nylon so that just means nylon that's been treated with polyurethane. Because this tent is a nylon tent it's recommended to have some sort of footprint. They do sell them on the 3FUL gear website but I would recommend just going with a sheet of polycryo. It's gonna be cheaper than the footprint that is built for this and also more lightweight. The weight of this tent with the guy lines, the tent body, and the compression stuff sack is 32.5 ounces, so just slightly over two pounds. And then of course, for complete carry weight, you would have to include whatever stakes. So the eight stakes that the tent comes with, along with the little stake stuff sack is 3.4 ounces. And then of course, the weight of a ground cloth has to be considered. If you go with the polycryo ground cloth I mentioned that I get from Gossamer Gear, it's 96 inches long and 72 inches wide, so you technically could trim it down to save a little bit of weight, but as it is, it comes weighing 3.65 ounces. So the total weight of all of that put together is 39.55 ounces. Now, of course, I haven't seam sealed it, so that will add a little bit extra to that number. The cost of this tent when I ordered it was $157 and that was from 3FUL2 Gears website. They are also available on some other websites. The price is always fluctuating. I noticed that today it was more expensive than when I purchased it. Considering that I also got the polycryo sheet for $11, then the total cost of this tent to me would be $168 plus seam sealer if I didn't already have it, and trekking poles if I didn't already have those. This tent is pretty straightforward to set up. You stake out the four corners and then put your trekking poles in and stake those out. At first, because of the design of the high points of the vestibule, there's a little flap there. I wasn't sure if the trekking pole was supposed to go on the inside of the vestibule or the outside, but with a little bit of logic, realizing you can't stake out the vestibule doors. If the trekking pole is on the outside of the vestibule, then put two and two together and figured it out pretty quickly. The tent seems well manufactured and put together. I didn't see anything that popped out as bad quality. Uh, I'll let you know after I give it a good run in the field, 
but there are some things that I guess I would say are less desirable about this tent or that I can spot I would already change in the design if it was up to me. First, the mesh sides only zip open halfway. So that means for convenience that you should sleep with your head towards the side that they unzip. That way, if you're sitting up in your tent, you can easily reach out the mesh door and access whatever you want to in your vestibule. It's not a big deal, but it's just something else that you have to think about when you get to camp and you're setting up to make sure that you put the head end of the tent on the higher slope. Whereas if there's a tent that the whole side panel unzips, then you can just throw your tent down and when you get in there, kind of determine, okay, which side is higher and that's where I'll put my head. Also, I only saw one pocket on the inside of the tent and it is conveniently located again if you pay attention to that particular side being the head side. But if you're gonna have two people, it would be nice to have two pockets on either side so each person has their own pocket. I noticed when I was setting up the tent and fiddling around with one vestibule that the opposite vestibule kept popping off of the stake. Now, I don't know if that's just the way I had the stake positioned or if it's gonna continue to be an issue, but I guess I'll find out when I hit the trail. And finally, I do not ever love about a shelter that I have to seam seal it. I would much prefer for that to be done at the factory, even if they offer a service for some extra cash to do the seam sealing themselves, I would always opt for that because seam sealing to me is kind of tedious and I'm always afraid that I'm not as practiced as a factory would be and so it might not be done perfectly. And then if I end up getting wet, I have to blame it on myself instead of somebody else. But overall for the weight, the price, and the first glance quality inspection of the tent, I am excited to give it a spin on my next trek. All right, y'all, well that is all I have for you today. If you have any questions about the Lanshan 2 Pro, from my initial thoughts, I'm happy to answer those in the comments below. And better yet, if you have any experience with the Lanshan 2 Pro, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank y'all so much for watching. And as always, a special thank you to my patrons who make videos like this possible. And we will see y'all next time.